As promised, Velvet Underground video. You might notice that my skin tones have come back. Last video I set the white balance in correctly. I was looking a little kind of like a spaceman or a glowing Martian, blue gray Martian type thing. Anyway, that's been fixed. And so I was going to do a Velvet Underground video as promised. And so what we have here is I got a few first pressings of Velvet Underground video of <laughs> Velvet Underground records. And so, you know, I'd already been buying some represses anyway. Sold those. So anyway, went into my local uh, local bookstore that sells records and uh, this place is kind of controlled by the local Santa Cruz vinyl mafia. I'm not really going to go too much further into it, but uh, if you ever go there and find any good records, let me know because it's virtually impossible. Anyway, I did find there, unbelievably, a third pressing of the Velvet Underground in Nico. This is from 1966, maybe 1967. I forget, okay? Sue me. Uh, it's on Verve Records. Okay, now here's the thing about this record. It came, uh, you know, originally, what it was is, uh, so it's a, okay, backtrack. Third pressing, East Coast pressing, and it is also, uh, let's see, was pressed, where it was pressed has something to do with this. East Coast pressing, Uh Okay, never mind. So it's, a, it's 1968. And what it is, is it has a sticker on the front. So if you can find an original, well, you know, original meaning like, you know, from the 60s, that uh, has, well, well, you know, it had a sticker anyway. Now they make it, with, they started making, they made represses without the sticker, where this banana wasn't a sticker. This was designed by Andy Warhol, by the way. And you can see that it says Andy Warhol right here, the banana. And then right here it says, peel slowly and see. And so you peel it, and then actually underneath is sort of like just sort of a, uh, how should I say, uh, sort of an outline for the banana. It's kind of pink. And so a lot of times people are selling this record with the banana gone. This one looks like someone might have peeled some of it and put it back or something. But it, it looks like the original one because, see, it kind of looks like they, uh, maybe not, maybe they didn't peel it, but it's a little off down here. Like they put it on wrong, like they peeled it off and then they saw, thought better of it or something. Then there's also this thing about this record that there's a, these pictures on the back. Now, I don't know if you can see a torso in here. They airbrushed out some torso. I've never really been able to figure out exactly what that means as far as the airbrushed torso. But this is an airbrushed torso copy as well as being a third state east coast pressing and then of course the velvet underground in eco and it is gatefold uh so there you have it this thing's from 1968 it was a little pricey certainly i mean at one point the local record store i think he had a second pressing of this and that thing was going for he was selling it for 150 bucks so he probably got it for a little cheaper than that but I've seen them for, you know, the owner of the record store. He got it at another record store, and he was selling it at his record store for 150 So that tells me he got it for cheaper than that. But I know, I've seen them on Discogs for hundreds of dollars. The first pressing, certainly. But, you know, a second pressing, even, you know, like this third pressing that I have. I mean, I was very thrilled to find this. So I have this. Now what I also have is, I do have, uh, where is it? I've got a couple different reissues of this. And so what I had done, what happened was, I was in this record store and do -do, I saw this and I like assumed, oh, it, it, it's probably, you know, because it was in the used bin, new arrival. Oh, it's probably a, you know, a, uh, you know, from the 70s or something. No, 
this is from like 2015 or something. So I had it. I, you know, I kept it, whatever. Well, I bought it, so I had it. No sticker. It doesn't even see pull and peel here. Andy Warhol. And it's just sort of like, you know, it really shows you, you can show you sort of, sort of the differences between, you know, like a repress and an original pressing. You can already see how, look how the, you know, the banana, I mean, even though the one here isn't a, doesn't have a sticker and this one's older, but it's just like the colors aren't really as dark or, or vivid and, you know, things don't get, you know, so the pictures aren't as, as, as bright. Uh, this one is a gatefold as well. It's it's a Verve Records, you know, record. I mean, Verve's a good record company. So, yeah, you know, it's just sort of like... And then the sound, who, whoever knows about the sound, you know? It all depends on how they re... You know, remade the, how they... The, the, re, the recordings, the original recordings. Did they have access to the original masters? Uh, how, you know, how did they do it? So... Sometimes, you know, the sound isn't as good on reissues. It can be... And, like, you know, I heard the, the, the um, Tommy James and the Shondells record that I listened to. I can guarantee that that reissue doesn't sound as good as that original one. The original one, you know, the pops and the crackling, but the sound just come, was coming out of my speakers so obviously so crisp and clear and deep and rich in ways that other records that I, you know, newer records that I've been listening to don't. So, it's, okay, so I have... Another, you know, I have a copy of this. I have the original, or one of early original, third pressing, and then I have this reissue from like 2015. And then I saw this thing, and I thought, well, okay, I'll get it just for the sake of completion or whatever. It's another copy, a repress. I'm sure it's from 2015 or 16. Yeah, that light's a little hot up in there, huh? But this one does say peel slowly and see because this is a stickered repressing that has the sticker and one thing that also was a selling point on this repressing one thing is the label is not you know there's the original verve label so here's the repress label what is that and this isn't even on verve this one actually this one is a different vinyl lovers velvet underground and nico and the reason for that i think is because under license from Universal Music, wow. Anyway, the thing about this one is that, well, it is on 180 gram vinyl. That's one good thing about this repressing. It's got the peeling banana and it has a little hype sticker explaining all this. And so it has a bonus track of Chelsea Girls. The Velvet Underground did Chelsea Girls. And so that's the bonus track on this. So anyway, I got it. Who knows, maybe someday it'll be worth something. Maybe not. Depends on how many they made and blah blah blah. Man. Also, with Velvet Underground, I have the Velvet Underground, the Velvet Underground first pressing. Got that on Discogs, and I was gonna, you know, Dylan was gonna sell this to me. You know, everybody, if, if you've seen any other videos, you know who Dylan is, guy my records from. Um, he had a copy of this, but it was really thrashed. It was a white label promo DJ copy, and it had a sticker that said, you know, plug promo. DJ copy or whatever, and so he was selling a copy of this, and he kind of wanted a lot of money for it, but it was in really bad shape, you know, and it was a, had a slight warp, and this and that, and then he was going to drop the price, and then he just ended up selling it all together, um, so I just found a straight copy of it. The record is in very good condition, like very good plus if you want to degrade it. You know, the sleeve isn't in the best condition. It's got some ring wear. But, you know, again, this thing's from the late 60s. And then it does have an original sleeve that it came with, which just has, like, some other uh, advertisements from MGM Records for um, other other bands and stuff. And so, yeah, this was on MGM, so that is an original sleeve. This was pressed by MGM, the Velvet Underground. Cool record. And then, you know, what I was just going to show you is that I do also have the reissue of this sealed, unopened. So it is what it is. Is the back, and then apparently this record, uh, the the audio mix 
is the Lou Reed Closet Mix. Whatever that means. I don't know what that means, really. Uh, Velvet Underground. First pressing, East Coast pressing of White Light, White Heat. Now, this was not very expensive. This is a first pressing from 1968. It's in, actually, I'd say, well, it's almost in better condition than that other, than the Velvet Underground record. Just the Velvet Underground, the Velvet Underground. But it does have a slight seam tear, and then it had been taped a really long time ago. It just doesn't have quite as much ring wear as the other one, and it doesn't quite have as much, you know, sort of wear along the edges as the other. But the records, are in both cases, you know, are in perfectly good shape. And then, of course, this is Verve as well, labels like, you know, like the other one. And, uh, yeah, so this is great, you know, to, to have these is very nice. I thought, and then what I was going to do was just show you a few other things that I do have. Now what they have been making is these Velvet Underground, the Legendary Guitar Amp Tapes. So here's Volume 2, and what these are is they're basically outtakes from the albums, like extended jam, random, kind of half versions of, uh, you know, songs from the original songs from the album. So this one has I'm Waiting for the Man, What Goes On, Ferry Boat Bill. Candy says, I'm set free in white light, white heat. So this one's a little better. It kind of almost like a better deal because it's got like six songs. And then this other one, volume three of the guitar of tapes, has two. I'm waiting for the man and I think heroin is the other one. Well, I know heroin is the other uh, song. What I'm wondering is if, yeah, there's just two songs, period, on the whole thing for volume two. The legendary guitar of tapes. And then I don't know where Volume 1 would ever be. I haven't seen Volume 1. I've seen bo both of these records in both stores, downtown, Santa Cruz. But I don't know where Volume 1 is. Or if there's a Volume 4 or whatever. Maybe it's an ongoing thing. I would like to get Volume 1. And then I also have Loaded, the Velvet Underground's last album that they did without the original drummer. They actually hired a pro drummer for that one. So it's got real drumming on it, not just dong, tsh, dong, dong. You know, because Mo Tucker, that's how she played. If you don't know, if you're not a big fan or whatever, she was like, she'd have two big, you know, like big furry mallet things and be like the bass drum just sitting on its side, like doo -doo 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 -doo, or doo -tsh, doo -doo. but she was a great drummer. Mo Tucker, legend. So she didn't play on the last album. So the last album, it's like, it's more like a Lou Reed album, you know, because that's the direction he started to go is after that sort of avant-garde, kind of noise rock, experimental direction that the Velvet Underground was going in. Uh, Lou Reed, of course, started assembling, right after the Lou, oh, Velvet Underground started assembling these really good bands of like really talented musicians playing more complex you know, like 70s style rock with the you know, with like, you know, good quality solos and drumming, you know, real drumming. And it was like more of a 70s band. And he obviously, you know, wanted to show that he, he could do more than just the, you know, the experimental thing. So, and he really abandoned that. And, um, and then, well, he did, he did, he was, he, I guess he was experimental throughout his career because his albums were never sold well. He had the one, the Take a, Walk, Take a Walk on the Wild Side, that song ended up being something of a hit later on, I think in the early 80s or whatever. So anyway, then there is also, I thought I had an original pressing of White Light, White Heat, which I'm pretty sure I do. I don't know where it is. Maybe I accidentally sold it thinking I had two. But then there's also this other thing that I picked up when I really didn't have hardly any Velvet Underground was... Um, it's just a compilation of previous uh, material on Sundays. This is kind of a good one to get if you don't have any Velvet Underground records or you're not like really into them, you want to check them out because it does have some, uh, you know, it's got the main songs, pretty much the some of the best songs off of um, the Velvet Underground and Nico, which is their first record. So it's got some of these songs that, you know, that Nico sang on, but then it also has some songs from other records later on because they 
you know, they their stuff is pretty, I'm not going to say varied, but uh, there's a lot of good songs there that Lou Reed wrote for the uh, Velvet Underground. And then this is on Sundays, so Sundays is that company, Sundazed is that record company that represses all this really old stuff. And it's kind of like, I'll see a used record and I'll like, oh wow, it's the Electric Prunes or whatever. And then I see that little Sundays thing and I'm like, oh no, this isn't an old record. It's a repress. But this one isn't a bad one to have, you know, because like, you know, it's a good compilation. It's got good songs on it. It looks, you know, the, the cover looks pretty cool. So, and then lastly, I do this other, I found this random thing. So this is from Italy. Superstar Records, Armando Curcio Editore, whatever that means. Uh, this is Lou Reed and the Velvet Underground, and this is pretty much the first album, minus some songs. And it's like a gatefold, it isn't a gatefold, it's a gatefold copy. It's got sort of this, oh actually I remember now that it has this like, it's kind of a weird, I don't know, it's kind of a cool, not weird, but like cool, kind of folds out and stuff. Um, but it's, I thought, wow, this is kind of like a town, you know, it's from Italy, never seen it before. It's kind of a weird fold out design with a little booklet thing, you know, you can just kind of see. Um, but it's, uh, oh, and it's got this booklet. Uh, I don't even know if I can get it out. Oh, I think it's just, no, it is a booklet. What is this? I can't, I can't figure out this. Oh, it's, the booklet is in the record. Is attached to the gatefold. See, that is pretty cool, actually. Well, what I was going to say is it's not worth anything. <laughs> it's really cheap. There's a, oh, that's a pretty good picture to read. Somebody did kind of a cool, like, shot him live film, no, you know, white balance or anything, compensation, just the lights from the, you know, the stage lights or whatever, kind of making it look weird, bad lighting, or, you know, in the case of rock and roll photography, it looks kind of cool, and then there's some stuff about him, and it looks like, um, Andy Warhol, it's all in Italian, by the way, there's loaded pictures of the band, this thing's pretty cool, <laughs> I'd forgotten about this, and then there's some pictures of Nico, See, now there's Nico, like, looking, whoa, rough. Look at her. Yeah, so many of the pictures. It actually, it looks like, here's John Cale, and he's a little older, too. Yeah, so these are, like, some pictures from, like, wow, she looks rough, rough. I mean, her complexion was, like, immaculate in those early pictures from when she was, like, had relatively recently been a model, but look at her right there. You know who she kind of looks like is um, uh, in Genesis Porridge, like in her later years. That's a, like an uncanny resemblance. Maybe that's what Genesis Porridge was going for. If you know who Genesis, so there's Lou. There you see with one of those bands I was talking about, a rocking. You know they're wearing cowboy hats. And, Big belts, big belt buckles, me in the 70s rockers. And then Luke was like really cultivating. Pro. Look, the guy's got the Zickos or whatever clear drums from back then. When these guys were using clear drums. My first drum set was a clear Zickos drums as well. Oh, and so there's a interview. Huh, I don't know. It's in Italian. I can't really tell you what's going on. Another cool picture of Lou. I hadn't even really looked at this much. I don't remember all that. So, I would think that this thing would be worth more than they're saying on dis Discogs. Oh well, you know, be a slave to Discogs. Don't be. Oh, see, look at that corner wear. Now, I know that I did this. See, there was, I was going to do a uh, storage capacity video really having problems with little kind of problems with storage you know and it's like I've kind of damaged a couple records just from knocking stuff over and having to stack stuff and it's kind of bummed me out because I need to like you know figure it out one of them was a box set that I 
put a little crinkle in the box. An unopened sealed box set, by the way. It wasn't super expensive, pretty good deal for what it was, five Bruce Springsteen live records in a sealed box for not that much money. So one of the, the last thing I got here that I was gonna show you, Velvet Underground Related, was Lou Reed, John Cale, and Nico, La Bataclan, 1972. This is a rare Italian pressed record as well. The gatefold sleeve. This is pretty pricey. There's Lou, like I was saying, he's cultivating the fro. And uh, it's a 2004 Italian import. Okay, gatefold. There's the record inside. What about the clon? Well, there's two records, in fact. It's pretty cool. They're sort of like mellower acoustic renditions of, you know, Velvet Underground songs. I think they do some other stuff three of them. I think it's pretty cool, you know, like when Nico is involved, she's got that voice that is really sort of, you know, kind of spooky, sort of haunting. And so, you know, you know, it's kind of stuff with her involved is, is cool when she's singing. So, hey, that's it. I'm going to cut this video short now. That was my little first pressing Velvet Underground video. Please subscribe. Give me the thumbs up. and Not a thumbs down, please. Come on. Is it really that bad? And then my other most recent vinyl blog is just uh, put up this morning. So hopefully we will, um, you know, we'll speak again.